welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Knapp. I'm Edward Lewis. Edward, thank you for filling in today for thank Charlie you. Cotton. Thank you for having me. I always appreciate it. Edward is our top dog over at TMZ Sports. And I can make an announcement to you guys. Charlie Cotton's wife has given birth to their second child, Woo. a daughter named Billy. Woo. He Congrats, told me Charlie. he wanted you guys to know that's where he's been. And Congrats. I approve boy names for girls. I love it. Little Billy, welcome. Uh, we have a lot of topics to get into today. We're going to be starting with Blake Lively. We have gotten all the details and some pretty interesting details, actually, about her beef with Justin Baldoni, her co-star. We'll get into that. Simone Biles. Her biological mom wants to reconcile, and this is after her huge win, massive sweep at the Olympics. So we'll get into that. Swifties are not allowed to tailgate, aka tailgating, but it's the Swifty way of saying tailgating, at Wembley Stadium. So if you don't got a ticket, don't show up. And lastly, Katy Perry's music video is under investigation for possible environmental damage after she was dancing around on some sand dunes. Mm -hmm. All right. First things first. H have you been keeping up with this Blake Lively story at all? No, not until today when I was preparing for the podcast. Oh, okay. So, well, welcome. Welcome, Edward, I'm here to now. the chat. I'm here. So lots of drama going on between Blake Lively and her co-star, Justin Baldoni. He is also the director of this new movie that they've been doing a ton of promotion for called It Ends With Us, which is an ironic name if you think about it because it, this story isn't ending at all. <laughs> so we are being told what really caused the rift between them were were a couple incidents that happened. Um, first, we're being told that during filming of this movie, Blake and Justin had a scene where Justin had to lift Blake up into the air. Before that scene happened, Justin went to the trainer that they have and said to the trainer, how much does Blake weigh? And he explains, the reason why I wanna know is because I have some back pain and I wanna see if this is something I can manage. Well, that got back to Blake Lively, who did not like this at all because she had just given birth to her and Ryan Reynolds' fourth child. Um, and I believe it was only a few months after she had given birth. So she felt this was weight shaming. She felt this was, you know, postpartum kind of nasty comments. Um, so that was one thing. A second thing we're told that, that we're told happened between them. Um, was the fact that they, one of their many kissing scenes, apparently Blake felt he lingered too long in their kissing scene and on his part, obviously. So that made her extremely uncomfortable. As you guys know, they have been doing a ton of press for this new movie. They've been walking the red carpet, but not appearing in any photos together. They're very distant. They've had different marketing agendas when it comes to talking about this movie, which was based on a book. And if you don't know what it's about, it's kind of, it talks about domestic violence. It's a, mm. it's a domestic violence kind of heavy topic. But Blake on the red carpet has been getting criticism for promoting it like, oh, come to the movie wearing your florals, bring your girlfriends <laughs> versus Justin on the red carpet is more like. I want to let everyone know I made this movie for the women. Raise awareness. You know, right. raising awareness for domestic violence. So, you know, there's kind of been a separation there as to how to market this movie. But now we know a few more details as to what their relationship has been like. This feels like the most contrived thing I've ever seen in my life. Wait, what do you this mean? This feels like an absolute plan to try to sell this movie. I, I, Look, I, is, is the drama helping? It is the most Probably. embellished stories I could imagine. I bet you if you did every single movie set in this depth and 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 pulled the stars of the the scenes uh, uh you would have issues that are 10 times greater than this. And this yeah. to me feels exactly like hey, dap up before the show. We got to put on an on, on a on a facade here that we hate each other and there was big drama with this whole movie because that's what sells. And frankly like I just told you that on, right before we talked about this, I had never heard of this story, let alone this movie. And now when you now tell you me, have. when you tell me, and not only that, but you tell me that Blake and her co-star were beefing, I'm like, maybe I should go see this movie. I kind of want to see this movie now too. And and I would have had absolutely zero interest in seeing this movie. You but know what I mean? Now. And now I have some interest. You know what I mean? And and imagine if you were a little bit greater than me. Like I'm a sports guy, so I really stay out of movies altogether. But like I I I I'm fascinated by this and I and I I think this is going to be a new play 
in a lot of movie stars' playbooks. I, I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a. So, so do you think this didn't happen, or you think it did happen? It's, and it it's just completely blew up? embellished. Right. I, I think I think there was probably. I, I mean, I, you work with coworkers here, and you hate them for a day. You know what I mean? And like, you're talking to me personally. Uh, not you, yes, no, no, definitely yes, not you. <laughs> no, I just, I just think that like anybody you work with, you're going to have beef with and strife with, especially yeah. in this kind but of then setting. Have to put on it's a, a high pressure, thing. high situation, and and never gets out because it's so minimal. I mean, come on. He was like, I I, I need to know how much she weighs because I'm not that strong or I'm too strong. You know what I mean? Oh, and Edward, to, 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 talking about a woman's weight in a I, negative. I picked you up. I need to know how much you weigh. Edward. This is crazy. Edward, we would to, never. If you said that to me, like behind my back, by the way, because this was to a trainer, not to her. If you said to somebody in this office, I need to know how much Charlie Neff weighs, not because she's skinny and like a little feather, but because she's looking thick. I would be like Edward. Anything Lewis. above a hundred pounds is a lot of weight, and I need to know. Oh, I need to know. No. I, know I don't mean that. I mean so when you're, you're picking up a when dog. I'm, when I'm when I'm, when I'm, I'm a shoulder hamster? pressing you over my head, and anything over hundred pounds is a lot. And if we're talking anywhere from over like hundred fifty pounds, I don't think I could do that. You know what I mean? Edward. From a shoulder press standpoint, that's a that's okay, a lot of weight. You're a weakling. If you can't pick up a you, 150 and shoulder pounds. press you and shoulder he's press you shoulder press. I don't know what he's doing I, I, I wasn't there that's what I'm saying it's all embellished I feel like it's very oh, what was no. the what was the movie before we go the Harry Styles movie it wasn't the, there was one just recently yes, that was um, a very similar playbook oh, right I'm forgetting kind of, with Chris kind of, Pine Oh, don't worry, darling. And it's kind of a mid movie. Nobody wanted to see it, and then all oh, of a sudden, a great movie. all of a sudden, that well, I mean, in terms of uh, from the masses or whatever, it was just it was it wasn't it wasn't Deadpool. You know what I mean? It wasn't this big blockbuster Top Gun two that everybody. I'm going to see it no matter what. So, but then you start talking about beef on set yeah, with, with mega Wild. with mega A list stars, and like, dude, I gotta see that, and it, it worked for them. That, and I think this is a complete page out of that playbook. And if you want me to buy this, I'm not. And I, I think this is the <laughs> fakest thing I've ever seen. And I think the continuation of it, you know what I mean? Oh, well, he said he was fat once. Well, he didn't want to kiss her once. I, I think it just all sells to. He backed up. He was kissing her too much. And he whatever. Say, whatever. Fat once. Whatever. And then, oh, Ryan Reynolds had to rewrite a script. Who cares? He's like one of the biggest stars in the world. Of course he had to rewrite a scene. That's like, weird. It's, That's weird. Get, That's like you miss me with into this. production and being miss like, me with this the story. show today. I hate this story. <laughs> I cannot believe that we're buying into it. Now we're helping Blake Lively make more money. Well, I'll definitely see the movie. I'm going to see it. Can go with me? Do you want to do a little date? Uh, Ed and Char. I can see it. Charl. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to Simone Biles. Okay, you got to fill me in on this. Edward, right. This is, this is wild. This is more of a serious story. Uh, uh, so Simone Biles, uh, if you didn't know, I actually didn't know this for a long time. Uh, when she was little, around two years old, she got placed actually into foster care. Uh, uh, and it was because her mother, Shannon, uh, had battled substance abuse. And uh, uh, a short time later... Uh, Simone's grandparents uh, took her in. That's that's Nelly and, and and you know the ones that that were running around with Snoop Dogg in Paris. Yes. And for a long time, I had no idea those weren't her. By I, I said the same thing too. I didn't. I, I it's you know it's been slipping my mind. Like this is one of the most famous Athlete athletes ever. in the world yeah. ever. <laughs> like and we had nobody really knows her backstory. But anyway, so Shannon uh, is her now mom. her mom has now come out to to the Daily Mail and, and, and did a sit-down interview with them where she explained that she basically wants to make amends uh, for, I guess, Simone's childhood, uh, for what some people would call, I guess, abandoning her, uh, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's, it's a difficult subject because of substance abuse and, right. and whether or not she could have taken care of Simone or not. But she said a quote. She said, I would like to make amends with Simone personally. I'm just waiting for her and her younger sister, Adria, to, to kind of come forward. Uh, uh, she said she has spoken to them, and we did an interview with her I want to say back in 2016, TMZ did. I didn't. Um, with, uh, the with, with Shannon and 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 she she had said that they had somewhat of a relationship, and she kind of reiterated that to the Daily Mail and said, you know, she's talked to Adria more than Simone, and they 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 do talk, but she made it clear that look, I want to have a relationship with Simone now, and I hope it's it can she can forgive me, and I'd like to have a sit down with her. And she even mentioned something that was also super sad. Um, Jonathan Owens, the NFL player. Married Simone, and she was like, "I wish I was a part of that ceremony and stuff." So she clearly wants Aww. back in in Simone's life, and yeah. obviously, you know, Simone's it, it's it's got to be such a whirlwind. She's she just got recently married. She had the yeah. twisties. She's now become another uh, a hero again. She had the drama with Michaela Skinner, and now now Shannon, her biological mother's coming back. It's it's a lot for Simone, I'm sure, but yeah. um, it's it's a wild story. But, you know, obviously, Simone has probably has boundaries, right? Which she absolutely should. Sure. Um, you know, and I know. From, you know, I was raised by my grandparents. Like, you kind of view whoever raised you as your actual parents, even mm. even if they're not your biological parents. So I can imagine it would be very heavy on Simone. And you also might 
look at this interview that the mom is doing and think like, what are her intentions? Yeah, what's the motive, right? Because, yeah. you know, it sounds great just on paper. Like she wants a relationship. She wants this and that. But she's also saying this right after such a huge win for Simone. It kind of makes me feel like it's very publicity driven. Sure. And it feels because of that, it feels a little inauthentic. And I feel like a lot of these conversations should happen privately sure. and not so publicly. I can't imagine Simone would like this to be public. Um, so, yeah, it, it's kind of tough. But obviously, it's it's got to be on Simone's terms, not the mom. It's great that the mom is expressing that she wants a relationship, but it ultimately comes down to Simone and what she wants and if she's had closure or not. Because when you don't grow up with your one of your parents that had you, there's kind of, you might have like some feelings like you wonder what it would have been like, what you what you how you would have grown up and at the end of the day you will eventually have your closure and it can come in so many different ways so has she had her closure where she feels like she doesn't need to have a relationship sure. i don't know but look i think everyone loves to see families on good terms and i think people would like to see a photo of simone and her mom reconciling you know something nice kind of like puts a button on this whole saga but we'll see sure all right, moving on to Swifties. There is no tailgating at Wembley Stadium. As you guys know, there was this huge, um, very scary scandal that happened where some people got busted for uh, plotting a terrorist attack. Well, Taylor has some shows coming up at Wembley Stad Stadium in England. And now the venue is making it clear, if you don't have a ticket, don't even think about hanging around outside of the stadium um, for her five night run because they're not taking any chances and authorities are very worried about, you know, security. They want to make sure everybody is safe in light of the terrorist plot that was being concocted. Um, but if you if you know Taylor Swift shows, you know that the tay gating portion of it is such a big part of her shows where people will show up. Like they mentioned, even if you don't have a ticket, people would show up like when I went to Taylor's concert here, there was I want to say like 20,000 people outside sure. of the venue just hanging out, trying to hear the music. And for me, I thought like, what losers? But for them, it's like a big fun experience. You know, they do a live stream. It's it's all part of like their Taylor Swift culture. But yeah, I, I do think they should stay away for everyone's sake. Yeah, how sad, right? Uh, I, I think it's absolutely necessary, especially given the 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 allegations or the the, the plans that were in place at the previous show, I, I, I think you always worry about copycats and like, oh my goodness, that could have right. been done. Maybe we could do it at Wembley. You know, maybe now that they're, you can come out of the woodwork. You know what I mean? It's just it's just a much safer uh, thing to not have 20,000 people just congregating in the parking lot outside totally. of this show. So, but it sucks. Like, like I remember Mel telling me first about this. Mel is our coworker here. I don't know if you know her. She's a big she Taylor Swift She runs the expert. Taylor Swift podcast, Swift T podcast. And, and she explained to me this whole concept way back when the shows were here in SoFi. And I was like, wait, wait, you just go out and sit at SoFi's parking just lot and just, no ticket, and just, just hang out. Hope, hope to hear just hear it in the background. Enough. Yeah, and and but it's so cool too because like the Swifties they all hand on bracelets and yeah. and they and they're they're such friends Singing. to each other and it's it's yeah. such a uh, such a cool experience. And now these two rotten eggs or three rotten eggs just ruined it for everybody. But yeah. like I said, it's it's just necessary. I I I I would feel so unsafe knowing that just weeks prior people had planned to blow this whole thing up yes. and 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 and. Knowing that they almost did it too, you know right. what I mean? Like, uh, like it, it wasn't like we in caught Austria, it. But they did shut down all those shows, y right? And, and 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 just knowing that how close it was happening there, uh, uh, it would just terrify me. And and it sucks. I I I hate that. That's you know the reality for for what we live in right now. But you have to do it, you know. Right. Um, and it's sad. Is there any concert you would show up to that you don't have a ticket to to just hear? Morgan Wallen, I will tell you, is unbelievable. Yeah, he's I've been right. to three of his shows now, and he sold out SoFi, and then I was in uh, DC for one, and then I was at Stagecoach, and he is unreal. The show is incredible, and it's similar vibe, right? It's like the there's masses of people that are like kind of in that Swifty age, that like twenty to forty range. So it's all people like in your age, and and Bonding. and all the songs are are so cool and hip, you know, similar to Taylor. Like they're all like they all chart, they're all on pops, they all you turn on your radio, it's all so Morgan. But would you go without a ticket, yeah. not getting in the venue, just to hear it in the parking lot? Uh, I mean, just a party beforehand, and, oh, okay, and, okay. and, and maybe party. turn on the radio afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I, I get the whole vibe. Here anywhere? Yeah, yeah, and a tailgate yeah. and a pickup truck. I'm in. All right, moving on to Katy Perry. Her music video is under the watchful eye of the Spanish government. Uh, her video is under investigation for possible environmental damage. 
So she's got a new music video called Lifetimes, and the video was filmed in Spain, um, some island off of Spain. It's called the Islet of Espalmador, um, and apparently has great ecological value. Well, the dune she was filming on, she was like dancing on the dunes, standing on the dunes, sitting on the dunes. Apparently those are protected. And now authorities are upset. They're investigating this to see if there was any kind of crime. She might be cited. Um, they're saying that production for the video was not authorized to film on these protected dunes. So now it's kind of become a big issue, which, by the way, the music video, in a way, is kind of like an advertisement for Spain. Like after seeing it, I was like, I want to go to Spain. It's <laughs> so fun. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to be that conspiracy guy here, too. But this feels contrived as well. Like you, you mean to tell me is like, the we're, biggest we're pop right. star on the planet yeah. went and filmed in these protected dunes and was all of a sudden didn't ask anybody and just jumped on them, especially Katy Perry. <laughs> Katy Perry's very uh, environmental. No, like that's kind of one of her bits is that she's is she? she's green and granola and all that stuff right like uh, uh I, I, <laughs> okay. I i you cannot tell me that she went to this place and was like these roped off dunes would be great let me yeah, go dance around there's them. like literal no ropes chance. No like chance. in the video so it looks like i mean if i saw a rope i would be like okay that's probably me i would think personally like oh that's maybe where like birds are nesting or something sure like, right yeah can't go over there and katie perry's not dumb you know what i mean i'm sure she said the same thing she didn't just hop them over and was like let's go dance on bird eggs yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> I, I this feels either that katie uh, checked in with the wrong people who gave her the wrong advice or like I said some sort of contrived thing with the Spain government where like you said it promotes tourism it promotes uh, eyes to this area and maybe promotes uh, environmental safety in the area as well so I, I to, to me I just don't believe this either I, I don't see how Katy Perry God, just Eddie. jumped over ropes and danced on on, on unborn chickens you know what I, mean? I, I just okay. I just don't see it man like oh. Edward and his and if she did, I guess she should be punished. But how are you going to punish her? She lives in the states. Maybe and, a little well, fine next time she's come oh, down. Uh, what money can you find her that would she be like affected yeah, by? You know? Yeah, no. But she should go back. Maybe make a donation. Sure, 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 Something sure. Like that. I, yeah, that, yeah. Would, that would put she'll be fine. On it. Yeah. All right. Today in history, Edward Lewis. Today is World Lizard Day. Do you like yourself some lizards? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're cool, I guess. Before I got like a little lip filler in my lips, I had like the tiniest little lips. I would always say I had like little lizard lips. Thank you. Shout out filler. <laughs> Shout them no out. have those. Shout them out. Uh, this day in 1965, Sonny and Cher's I Got You Babe became number one. Good song. It's a good uh, karaoke song, like for a duo. Right. Duet. Yeah. Duet. Yeah, yeah. 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 I right. like that one. Cool. Uh, this day in 1985, Michael Jackson took control of the Beatles' publishing rights. So this is kind of a funny, quick story. <laughs> so Paul McCartney was friends with Michael Jackson. Paul McCartney gave Michael Jackson some advice. He's like, hey, just let you know, it's really valuable if you snatch uh, other artists' music rights. Okay. And Michael Jackson's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Thanks for the tidbit. Well, it backfired on Paul McCartney because then... Michael came in and got the Beatles rights and Paul came out and he said, that was dodgy. Like I taught him how to do this. Wait, why didn't Paul just do it then? Well, yeah, that's a whole thing too. Okay. Okay. But so he didn't like that Michael had commercialized the Beatles songs. And when Michael passed away, there was a bunch of rumors that he was going to leave the Beatles catalog in his will to Paul. Okay. Didn't happen. Who'd he leave it to? Unclear, oh, but it okay. wasn't to him. Okay. So that poor, poor Paul. Yeah, poor Paul. I'm sure poor that Paul. really, really affected him. Um, moving on. This day in 2000, Dora the Explorer premiered on Nick Jr. Cute. Were you a Nickelodeon Cute. guy or Disney guy? Uh, this is both are like predate me. I think I, I Dora and and all. You're too old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Edward, you're I, a baby. I, I, yeah, no, not really. Um, birthdays today, we have a lot of them. Halle Berry, who, by the way, walked the red carpet recently. Did you see those photos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, today? like oh almost naked. Oh, my God. She mm -hmm. looks good. Sure, Holy sure. crap. Um, Halle Berry's birthday, Magic Johnson's birthday, Steve Martin, Mila Kunis, Spencer Pratt, and Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Yeah. Fun story, Spencer Pratt uh, was on the hills and... and yeah. His favorite restaurant is my favorite restaurant. It's called Don Antonio's. It's right next to my house. Oh, wow. Look at you guys have something yeah. in common. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see you guys doing like little dinner dates. Like there. a double date. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys would be double trouble. Yeah, we would be. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Edward, thank for Thank you for having me, in. Charlotte, As always. We'll see you guys tomorrow.